Not everything in this world comes with a label. If we find something we don't understand, we might consult the internet or a textbook. If that yields no answers, you might ask a learned friend. If you're still having no luck, you might ask a scientist. But even scientists find themselves stuck occasionally. They were certainly stumped by the discoveries in this video. In 1912, an utterly perplexing discovery was made in a coal mine in Wilburton, Oklahoma, USA. It was an iron cup embedded within a block of coal, estimated to be around 300 million years old. The discoverer, Frank J. Kennard, recounted the event, but his account remains the sole evidence, casting a shadow of skepticism due to its lack of scientific rigor and the subsequent mysterious disappearance of the supposed artifact. Theories have been proposed to explain the cup's presence in the coal, including the possibility of it being encased in water that later solidified into coal. Mark Isaac, a commentator on the case, suggests the cup, made of a material resembling cast iron, might have been a tool from the 18th century, possibly used by a tinsmith or bullet caster. Despite various alternative explanations offered by skeptics, none conclusively explain how the artifact ended up embedded in such ancient material. This enigmatic find, like others of its kind, is often seen as a challenge to conventional historical and archaeological perspectives and is of particular intrigue to proponents of ancient alien theories. The Bolevi Mausoleum is a significant historical landmark in Turkey, renowned as the second largest mausoleum in Anatolia, only surpassed by the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. This monumental tomb, dating back to the Hellenistic era, is situated near Selçuk in the Aegean province of Izmir, approximately 20 miles from Kusadasi. The mausoleum was initially designed for either Antigonus Monophthalmus or Lysimachus, two prominent figures of the Hellenistic period. It is also believed to have served as the final resting place for the Seleucid king, Antiochus II Theos. Despite its historical significance, the mausoleum's precise origins and purpose remain a subject of debate among scholars. Its architectural design closely resembles that of the mausoleum of Halicarnassus, further enhancing its historical intrigue. The Belvi Mausoleum stands as a testament to the rich historical and cultural heritage of ancient Anatolia, offering valuable insights into the burial practices and architectural prowess of the Hellenistic era. Despite that, there are some who believe that it was never used as a mausoleum at all. Just because it looks like one doesn't mean that it was actually used as one, and there's no evidence anyone was ever buried there. The words ancient curse rarely have positive implications, but curses weren't always written with negative intent in ancient times. Take the Pella Curse Tablet, for example. Despite the scary name, archaeologists believe it's a so-called love curse, written by a woman named Dajina who wanted to make a man called Dionysophon fall in love with her. It's written in the Doric Greek dialect on a lead scroll and is roughly 2,400 years old. The artifact was found in Pella, Macedonia in 1986. Aside from being a fascinating insight into the romantic lives of everyday people 2,400 years ago, the fact that it's written in Doric Greek indicates that the ancient Macedonian language was, in fact, a dialect of Northwestern Greek rather than a language in its own right. In writing the curse, Dejina was very specific about her wishes. She wanted Dionysophon to marry her rather than a woman named Thetima, and also wanted to grow old alongside Dionysophon unless she returned to dig up the scroll and unroll it. It's interesting that even though she wanted to steal Dionysophon away from another woman, she still wanted to give herself a get-out clause in case she changed her mind. Inca Kamana, also known as the Inca's Rest, is an enigmatic structure located in Cusco, Peru, that has puzzled archaeologists and researchers for decades. The structure consists of a set of perfectly carved stones, 
that form a small platform with a stairway leading up to it. The platform is believed to have been used by Incan rulers as a ceremonial seat during important events. The stone carvings on the platform depict various animals, plants, and geometric shapes, but their meaning and significance remain unclear. Some theories suggest that they may be connected to the Incan calendar. The platform also features an unusual carved hole that's aligned with the June solstice, leading some to speculate that it may have been used for astronomical observations. Despite its mystery, Inca Kamana remains an important symbol of Incan culture and heritage, and efforts are being made to preserve and study the site. Its location within the city of Cusco makes it easily accessible to visitors who can admire the skill and craftsmanship of the Incan people and ponder the meaning behind this intriguing structure. Nibster Broke, located in Caithness, Scotland, is a historic site that offers a glimpse into the region's rich archaeological past. This coastal promontory is home to a large circular building and various cellular outbuildings, surrounded by a defensive rampart. The site was first excavated by Tress Barry in 1895 to 1896, with further surveys and excavations conducted in the 2000s. The first construction at the site, a defensive rampart, dates back to the Middle Bronze Age and early centuries CE. The roundhouse wall, with an internal diameter of 20 feet, is notable for its large wall-to-diameter ratio, the largest ever known for Atlantic roundhouses. However, its small interior suggests it was more modest than other Caithness brokes and roundhouses. The site also features outbuildings from the late Iron Age, forming a village around the roundhouse. Artifacts uncovered at the site, including stone, bone, ceramics, and grains, hint at everyday life, from food processing to leisure activities. The presence of Roman artifacts and evidence of non-ferrous metalworking suggest Niebster was a high-status settlement. It's like multiple layers of history all piled up on top of each other at a single site. 4,500 years ago, a part of the world that we now know as Northern India was home to the Indus civilization, stretching from there into the east of Pakistan. The remains of more than 2,000 Indus sites have been uncovered by archaeologists, but nothing puzzles them quite as much as the Indus script, which appears on the stone seals left behind by this mysterious culture. Are the symbols on the seals a form of written language? We're not sure, but if it is, we still haven't been able to translate it despite recovering more than 6,000 examples of it. Aside from appearing on stamps, the script also appears on pottery, tablets, weapons, and tools, often accompanied by drawings. The glyphs often recur, which is a telltale sign of a written language, but they don't quite recur often enough for analysts to be positive that they're an attempt to convey a message. They might be nothing more significant than a description of the items they've been found on, or they could be a whole written history of the Indus that we don't have the skills or knowledge to translate. There are many ancient and wonderful temples in Syria, most of which have their own fascinating story to tell. But the fascination with the temple of Ain Dara is especially strong. That's mostly because of the huge human foot imprints that appear at the entrance to the temple. They've been there for at least as long as the temple has, which is at least 3,300 years and there's disagreement about how they got there. Scientists and archaeologists say that they were carved by the same people who built the temple and are intended to represent the procession of the gods into the temple's inner chambers. But many local legends say that the temple itself was visited by a great god with clawed feet who left the imprints itself. Yet another school of thought says that the people who built the temple were giants, and they left their footprints behind. There are many tales of giant humans living in this part of the world during ancient times, and the footprints are the first thing that the people who believe those stories point to as evidence. Sadly, the temple was badly damaged after being hit by a Turkish air raid in 2018, but the footprints survived. 
The Pilavstian statues, often referred to as stone idols, are enigmatic ancient sculptures scattered across Russia, southern Siberia, eastern Ukraine, Germany, Central Asia, and Mongolia. These statues, largely unknown to the outside world, predominantly depict male warriors adorned with helmets, armor, and weapons, while female figures are often seen with hats and purses. The statue's origins and cultural significance are shrouded in mystery, with many unresolved issues surrounding their construction. The tradition of erecting such anthropomorphic stelae dates back to the Bronze Age cultures of Central and Middle Asia around the 4th millennium BCE, later adopted by the Kimmers and the Scythians. The art of creating these stela, requiring proficiency in processing different kinds of stone and wood, appeared among the early Turks and spread across the Asian steppes. The practice abruptly disappeared with the fall of the Pilavstians and the rapid spread of Islam. These statues, often placed on the summits of old Kurgan mounds, possibly served both religious and political purposes, adding to their intrigue. The Pilavstian statues represent a significant yet neglected part of history, and their preservation is crucial for future generations. There appears to have been an unknown civilization living in the forest of Fontainebleau in France many years ago, and they might have known far more than they ought to have known about animals. The whole forest is full of archaeological curiosities, including three-fingered humanoids painted onto cave walls and undecipherable carvings made in areas of the cave that ought to have been too narrow for humans to stand in. What's really weird, though, is the collection of carved rocks and boulders in the forest. Some depict human faces, which is fair enough, but others clearly depict exotic animals, including elephants. Elephants have never been native to France, and there certainly shouldn't have been any in the country 1,000 years ago when the rocks were carved. How did the people who carved these rocks know what an elephant looked like? In fact, how did they even cut the stones? Perhaps we'd know if we could translate the written language that accompanies so many of their cave carvings. Unfortunately, we can't, and it's possible we'll never be able to. There are people who have been lost to time. Some people say that the Coldstream Stone is the oldest work of art in the world. It's a controversial claim, so let's examine it. The stone was found more than 100 years ago in a rock shelter on the banks of South Africa's Lottering River. The scene painted upon its surface is basic. We see three human figures, each represented by a different color, seemingly engaged in a hunt. There may once have been more to the scene, but the stone was found two feet underground in warm, wet conditions thanks to the river. The river has eroded the stone and should have destroyed the artwork, too but these layers of paint have managed to cling on. The most likely candidates for the creation of the piece are the San hunter-gatherers. The San people are among the oldest cultures on Earth, with origins that could be traced back more than 40,000 years. We'd have an easier time accepting that this is a genuine artifact were it not for its condition. There are suspicions that, rather than being a genuinely ancient piece, it was buried in the river very close to the time of its discovery, and so the whole thing's a hoax. The jury is still out on that matter. Next up, we have the Mizora Stone Circle. It's a mysterious prehistoric monument located in Morocco, and it's been a source of fascination for archaeologists and researchers for years. The circle consists of 168 standing stones, arranged in a circular pattern with the largest stone measuring over 15 feet in height. The stones are believed to have been placed there over 9,000 years ago, making them one of the oldest stone circles in the world. Despite their age, the stones are remarkably well-preserved, with intricate carvings and engravings still visible on their surfaces. The purpose of the Mizora Stone Circle remains a mystery but some researchers believe that it may have been used for astronomical observations or as a site for religious or spiritual ceremonies. Others suggest that it may have had a more practical purpose, such as marking the seasons or serving as a communal gathering place. 
The circle is located in a remote area of Morocco, but efforts are being made to preserve and study the site. It remains a popular destination for tourists and researchers alike, who come from all over the world to marvel at its beauty and speculate about its meaning. Inside the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza is a stone coffer, which is sometimes referred to as a sarcophagus. Nobody knows why it's there. It's the only thing inside the chamber, and as far as we know, that's the way it's been for the past 4,500 years. It's made of granite, which isn't the same material the surrounding walls and floor are made from. It's a generally accepted theory that the stone was lowered into the chamber before it was enclosed, as the coffer wouldn't have fit through any of the passageways to get into the chamber, and doesn't seem to have been assembled in situ. That means the Egyptians went to an enormous amount of trouble to get it into the chamber, so it must have been very important to them. That's despite the fact that it never housed human remains, and served no other obvious purpose. What's it doing here? Why is it the only thing inside the chamber? If it wasn't designed to house human remains, what was it designed for? These are all questions we don't have answers to. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.